everyone. Uh, welcome to the Bartholomew Literary and Scientific Institution. Uh, my name is Ian Gadd. I am uh, the chair of the board at the Bartholomew Literary and Scientific Institution. On behalf of uh, everyone who works here and volunteers here, uh, who makes these kind of evenings possible, I uh, extend a very warm welcome to you all, particularly if this is your first time uh, with us. I am also a professor of English literature at Bar Spa University, which is how we come to have a uh, very distinguished uh, musician with us tonight. Um, one of my roles at the university is uh, I manage our international partnerships, and one of those partnerships, which goes back uh, um, pretty much 10 years now, is with the University of Udine in uh, northeast Italy. And um, it was through our primary contact uh, there, who is joining us here tonight, Professor Antonella Reem, uh, a professor of English Literature uh, uh, there, that um, she put us in touch with our uh, um, performer this evening. Um, and I want to thank Antonella for that. It's a part of our uh, um, relationship between our two universities and so our, um, uh, our performer this evening is here for the week. He is uh, doing a series of master classes at the university for our students um, and delivering a lecture to our staff and students with Antonella uh, tomorrow evening. But tonight I'm delighted to say that he is here to give a public concert. And so I'd like to introduce Francesco Bonotto, uh, who is, um, I thought I wore many hats, but he wears more than me. He is an Associate Professor of, Roman of Romance, Philology and Linguistics at the University of Bologna. Uh, he is also a poet and a musician, and in those roles he composes oral epics and sings bardic songs and we're going to hear a lot of that this evening. Um, he is uh, amongst uh, other things uh, founder of ethno-philology, a discipline which an interacts with texts in an anti-authoritarian libertarian perspective and with, and this will be particularly uh, um, relevant tonight, a focus on native and oral traditions. He has issued 15 musical albums, possibly 16 now after last, yes, 16 after last week, we have a, a, um, a couple of sets of CDs here, uh, issued in Italy, Denmark and the UK. He's won numerous important music prizes, including um, my favourite title of all. He has uh, won the Honorary Bard of Portugal. Uh, he has also published widely, um, including this book, The Ridge and the Song, uh, which is also available for purchase here this evening. And The Ridge and the Song is where tonight's uh, concert title comes from. Just before I uh, welcome Francesco up on the stage, a couple of uh, uh, housekeeping notes. The first is that should uh, um, a, an alarm interrupt the concert, that is not a planned uh, uh, drill, and so we will, be need, we will need to leave the building down the stairs and congregate uh, um, on the corner of Queen Square and Chapel Row. The other bit of logistics is, as you can tell, we are both amplifying this evening, but we are also recording. So although we're not uh, uh, broadcasting this live across the internet, we are recording this. And I'm very grateful to Tim and Matthew for not only spending uh, a good couple of hours setting up the equipment this evening. Um, it's rare, I think, to see quite so many microphones uh, 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 in one place. Um, but Tim will also be uh, uh, managing the, the sound and the, uh, the video uh, this evening, so I'm very grateful to both of them. However, you haven't come here to hear me. Uh, Francesco, I'd like to welcome you to the front and hand over to you. So, Francesco Benito.
Romatis de Ponkel, Titalit Lokel, Titalit Lokel, Romatis de Ponkel, Titalit Lokel, Titalit Lokel, Romatis de Ponkel, 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 Titalit Lokel, Romatis de The first song was a song from uh, Cornwall, you know, sung in, a, in the Cornish language, which is the Celtic language of uh, Cornwall. <coughs> I've learned it uh, when I used to live in Wales. A fiddle player from those places uh, taught me the lyric, and uh, I managed to rearrange that melody on my harp. The harp I have with me tonight is a model of a bardic harp uh, made on a Welsh pattern. It was built by an Italian uh, harp uh, maker, Michele Sanginetto, uh, just for me, because I saw uh, uh, in a medieval manuscript uh, of the Welsh bards uh, an image of a bard with uh, a small harp. I asked him to create the instrument. So this is why we call it the bardic harp. It was kind of bard that, uh, of harp that uh, those uh, uh, vagrant poets used to go on cliffs, uh, on uh, courts, on castles in order to sing their songs. The small concert that I'm honored to, to give you tonight uh, uh, in this beautiful place uh, is a, a kind of a small tour around the concept of traditional music. I come from the mountain region of northern Italy the Apennini, the Apennines, near Bologna, actually in the region, the part of Modena. And uh, as uh, Ingad uh, rem uh, rem told you, I'm a scholar of uh, philology and uh, of ethnophilology. It means that uh, apart from studying old languages, uh, 
medieval languages, I also like uh, or mostly like uh, to go around the world to pick up uh, songs and traditions and legends from different places. This is why I then decided to put them into music and uh, to uh, bring them with me in my small concerts. As I come from Northern Italy, I'd like to make you listen three songs from, strictly from my area. Uh, one uh, is an, a very ancient song, uh, it's called The Deserter, and uh, it goes back to the 17th century probably, but it was sung also during the, the last wars uh, that we had in our blue world. And uh, it's a very simple song, uh, coming from, uh, it comes from a um, part of uh, the <coughs> my mountains called uh, Frasinoro, a very high, small village up in the mountains. And uh, the lyric is very simple. It's in Italian, local Italian, but it says, I was poor, but I was a deserter. And uh, once uh, they put me into jail, they asked me why I decided to desert. I simply replied them that I didn't want to take part to the war. And then uh, the, the, the end of the story was that uh, he was actually killed because no one loves deserters, <laughs> in, in, nor the winner, nor the losers of the words. And uh, this is a very old, uh, traditional uh, uh, song uh, from my region uh, that I like to sing for you. Desertore, 
andavo per la foresta che un pensiero mi venne, mi venne in testa di non fare mai più mai più il soldato Now another song uh, actually there are two songs from uh, my mountains the first is a dialogue between a mother and a daughter about a uh, young man do I have to marry him? Do I have? Don't have? So it's typical dialogue of the of the of the traditional uh, songs. The second is a sort of libertarian song that uh, used to be sung at the end of uh, 19th century, when um, the corrupted banks uh, uh, were uh, it looks like uh, contemporary history, but were uh, governing Italy. And so uh, this song is uh, against this, this uh, situation sung in the typical storytelling cantastoria way we have in that part of uh, our mountains. <laughs> Mamma mia, vorrei, vorrei, cosa avresti, viola mi? A vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai, o morirò. Vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai, o morirò. Nell'orto e di pom, se li vuoi te li darò, ma da ben che brutta mamma non capisce il mal che c'ho. Mamma mia, vorrei, vorrei, Cosa avresti fiola mi? A vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai o morirò. Vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai o morirò. Nell'orto è del pane, se li vuoi te le darò. Ma da me che brutta mamma non conosce il mal che c'ho. Viola mi, a vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai, o morirò. Vorrei quel che nell'orto me lo dai, o morirò. Nell'orto dello plan, se lo vuoi lo chiamerò. Ma da ben che bella mamma ha capito il mal che c'ho. Ma da ben che bella mamma ha capito il mal che c'ho. S'affondano le mani nelle casse cra, si trovano sacchetti pieni d'oro. E per governare cosa fare? Rubar, 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 sempre rubare. Ma i nostri governatori sono tutti malfattori, ci rubano tutto quanto per farci da tutor. Noi siamo tre celebri ladroni che per aver rubato ci hanno fatti senatori. Noi siamo tre ladri tutti e tre che per aver rubato ci hanno fatti cugini del re. Ai, na, 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 ai, na, 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 na. Se rubi una pagnotta un cascherino, crac, te ne vai dritto in cella senza onore. Se invece rubi qualche milioncino, ti senti nominar commendatore. Ma i nostri governatori sono tutti malfattori, ci rubano tutto quanto per farci da tutor. Noi siamo tre, celebri ladron, che per aver rubato ci hanno fatti monsignor. Noi siamo tre, ladri tutti e tre, che per aver rubato ci hanno fatti cugini del re. La e la la la, la e la 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 la, la 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 Celebri ladron, che per aver rubato ci hanno fatto i senatori. Noi siamo tre, ladri tutti e tre, che per aver rubato ci hanno fatto i cugini del re.
Thank you so much. As a third example of uh, music from my region, I <clears throat> I'm quite proud to sing you a song that I learned uh, by a chorus of, um, uh, in Italy we had this tradition of the um, rice weeders, uh, particularly in the middle of the 20th century. These uh, women now are uh, quite old, most of them are 95 or 100 years old, but they have a chorus when they, where they still sing uh, those songs that they, they were working songs, useful for them for uh, mm, thinking home when they were far away from home, and also now for remembering their youthness, their youth, youthness, yes. And um, I'm very proud, I, I, I played many times with that chorus, with my harp, and uh, I've learned a lot of songs. This is one of the songs of this uh, traditional uh, working song from uh, the rice uh, weeder from Northern Italy. harp player in Ireland in the 18th century whose name, a uh, blind harp player, was Thurlogo Carolan. Yeah. 
and uh, he was uh, very famous and uh, it happened that uh, as a friend of his uh, was an Italian um, student uh, of music uh, during the Barocco period, uh, even if uh, O'Carolan was a blind harper, uh, this friend of his uh, managed to uh, write down the notes of the songs that he collected during all his life. And uh, O'Carolan himself, O'Carolan himself became a legend, a legend, a, a bard, a, a modern bard, uh, modern in the sense that he was not a medieval bard, became, and uh, many legends uh, speak about O'Carolan. And um, among these legends, there is this uh, idea that the song I'm going, the, mm, the melody I'm going to play you, which is called uh, O'Carolan's Rumble to Cashel, was the last song he played before going to die near a cliff. And uh, we don't know if it's a legend or not. I've, even if uh, we have uh, witnesses <coughs> that wrote down that uh, they listened to him playing beautifully playing uh, this uh, melody and then he disappeared uh, near the cliffs. What a end, uh, beauty beautiful end for a bard. So this is O'Carroll and Stramble to Cashel. I played with my, try to play that beautiful song with my bardic uh, harp. It's a kind uh, of celebration of that great man. Another old song I learned in Ireland, uh, uh, where I traveled a lot uh, when I used to live in Wales, uh, come from the county Cork, come from the territory of Cork, uh, and it's about uh, it's an old, uh, old, uh, very magical, traditional song. It's about uh, the, maybe something like the wild side of our existence because it tells the story of three gypsies that goes to a house. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, the, I mean, the, the woman of the house uh, disappears with one of them and the husband <coughs> comes back to the house after the pub and says, where is my wife? And the servant girl says to him, uh, she's away with a gypsy, with a gypsy. So he starts to, to uh, with his horse, he goes for all, all over the island, north, south, east, west, 
till he sees uh, his wife uh, on a plane uh, under the moon uh, kissing this gypsy. So he understands he, she was not uh, raped. She was not. She was. Uh, she was. She intended to go with him, and so he asks her, "Why? How could you leave your money, your hus new husband, your richness for this uh, gypsy?" And she said, I, "I just wanted to stay." With him, so it's a typical story of of the tradition, a typical story that uh, actually uh, many times uh, does not exist in reality. But the traditional songs are have this power of telling stories that uh, maybe exist uh, not in reality but uh, in our mind, in our dreams. <laughs> There were three old gypsies get the well and man at her, the eagle and brave and the badly ho, and the one sang high and the other sang low, and the other sang the rocket like a gypsy yo. He saw some stairs down, said the lady who went and fired and for his later hold, and it was this cry from around the door, she's away with the rocket like a gypsy yo. It was late that night when the lord came in, inquiring for his lady, he hoped, and the servant girl she said to the low, she's away with the rocket like a gypsy yo. Now he wrote this, he wrote west, he wrote north and south also, until he reached a wide open place, she's away with the rocket like a gypsy. Now how could you leave your house and your land? How could you leave your money? Ho? How could you leave your newly married man? All for this rocket like a gypsy yo. So what do I care on me house on me land? What do I care on me money? Ho? What do I care on me newly married man? I'm away with the rocket like a gypsy yo. There were three old gypsies, get to one a man at all. They came brave and a badly ho. The one sang high and the other sang low. And the other sang the rabbit like a gypsy ho. Now a song, a sailor song, which comes from Connemara. Uh, it's an old uh, song I've learned by uh, great guy I met uh, in Wales, uh, he was my professor of uh, Old Irish. He was from Boston, but actually his family was from uh, Dooley. Oh. Dooley is a small village near Galway, where they are so famous for playing the penny whistle. And so he told me this song, which is uh, about uh, uh, um, sailors that sing together before leaving the coasts of Ireland. It's uh, apparently a very old song uh, belonging to the tradition of the whalers. And uh, I interlace it uh, with uh, a melody coming from uh, O'Carolan's uh, uh, stuff, O'Carolan's repertory. This song, the lyric of this song in uh, the local Gaelic is uh, Seamus Maho, Seamus Maho, let's go on, let's go on, let's uh, row again, friends, let's go. Um, towards the, the, the far remote sea. But this is an happy song. It's not a nostalgic song. It's, uh, it makes me think about uh, the first uh, scenes uh, described in Moby Dick uh, when the whalers, uh, before leaving, uh, they are in the tavern singing and laughing together before the disaster. But uh, this song is a very happy one. And I, I'd like to... It's not very famous, actually, in the um, folk repertory of uh, Irish musicians. So uh, I'm quite um, happy to, to make you listen to it.
Shame, 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 smaho. Shame, shame, smaho. Shame, 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 smaho, and maho. Mire and mire and mire and maha. Mire and mire and maha. Mire and mire and mire and maha and maha. I'd like to, to go there for a while, so this is territory. And uh, I mentioned the bards. Uh, one of the books I, I recently published is a translation from uh, Old Welsh of uh, the stuff by Taliesin, uh, the one of the most reputed bards of the sixth century, and Sivarhen, and uh, from the Black Book of, book of Carmarthen. I, I translated those poems into Italian, and uh, I also put uh, them into music. And uh, there is a song that I'm now going to sing you that is not part of the CD. Uh, um, but it's uh, about uh, probably my favorite poem, my favorite song by Taliesin, this incredible shaman bard of the sixth century. It's, the lyric uh, is uh, Bim Buch and Bim Beuch. Uh, Bim banu, bim banuch, bim heo, bim heoch. I was uh, a deer, I was a boar, I was a river, I was a stone, I was a part of the black stone on the, the cliff. I was, uh, I was, I was, this, this, this is a kind of shamanic uh, incantatory song. And um, so I put it uh, into music, uh, collecting uh, a few melodies from um, contemporary tradition of uh, Wales. Uh, and this song uh, is an attempt uh, to make you listen the words of the bards, the ancient bards, which are the, the archetypes of our poetry in the Western world, the first great poets in the Western world. And uh, this is uh, the poem I was telling you about. Bimbano, 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 
in my life to meet uh, probably the best uh, folk guitar player that uh, existed in our world it was uh, John Rambord the English uh, great musician I met him many times because he used to tour a lot in Italy and uh, uh, it happened uh, that we were performing in the same festival so a small contest and I had a great great big honor to play in a few concerts together with him. And um, he's uh, an example of a contemporary bard for me. He's, uh, he was a great musician, connected with the blues tradition, but also with the English tradition of songs, which is uh, a forgotten tradition in, uh, folk, uh, in the folk staff of uh, folk musicians, but he was very proud to uh, found uh, to find uh, songs from all around England and also he was a great, great interpreter of medieval songs. He did extraordinary concerts and CDs about that. So he died a few years ago, but uh, there is a song that uh, he told me and uh, it, it's a song for children collected in somewhere in, uh, in Kent and uh, he rearranged it and we played it together uh, it's a song about children um, running together around the big oaks in the countryside and it's very happy song and a uh, very short uh, one but i it was impossible for me not to remember john uh, in uh, such a place like this so this is uh, um, a carol belonging to the English tradition of uh, songs for children. Actually, it's a melody, I'm not singing, I'm just playing.
done. Another territory where I traveled a lot during the last 15 years uh, is the northwest uh, region of uh, Iberian Peninsula, the Galicia. Uh, Galicia and North Portugal. And uh, I also studied a lot of traditions there, particularly the megaliths tradition. They have the most ancient uh, men here and dolmens of the Western tradition belonging to the fifth millennium before Christ and uh, apparently uh, in, as, as I study in my recent research, uh, this is the place from where the Celts are from, uh, from the west and uh, they were pro possibly the fishermen in Mesolithic times and they were the builders of those uh, great monuments of the megaliths. Uh, mm, that place is very, very Irish in a way. If you, if you catch a plane uh, and uh, go to Vigo, for example, from Bologna, the direct flight, and uh, you don't know actually if you, where you are going, when you arrive there, you think to be in Connemara because the, <laughs> the, the landscape is like that and the way of building the houses and the cultural landscape is very Celtic. They are very proud of their Celtic origins I studied a lot those, those traditions and I'd like to make you listen uh, to songs from Galicia that I've learned from my friends there. The first is uh, a melody called Agua de Mayo, which means the water in the month of May. It's a song that uh, was, uh, as they told me, was traditionally played by fishermen one more time when they were so far from Galicia during the five, six months of uh, fishing in the north, maybe in Iceland, for going to catch the cods and other fishes. And this song was played uh, with the local accordion, uh, just to have good memories, not sad memories of the ter beautiful territories of Galicia. This is Agua de Mayo. Another song from Galicia is um, another very traditional song, particularly uh, present in the uh, communities of immigrants of uh, South America coming from Galicia. 
It's about, it's called Arian Cheira. And uh, it's a strange story. It's about uh, uh, a small statue of the Virgin Mary that is put on a ship, in a little a boat, little boat, down the river and uh, towards the sea. And uh, the song, uh, who sings the song, says to the statue, don't go on the sea, you could uh, die there. It's apparently it's the strange uh, or even funny lyrics, but it's very deep one because it describes exactly what the carnival, the great tradition of carnival in uh, Eurasia was at the beginning when the carnival was the Carrus Navalis. So it was a, a, a small boat uh, that was put uh, into the river and uh, towards the sea. At the beginning we have um, examples with the Egyptian goddess uh, Isis and then with the, we have examples uh, with uh, the Virgin Mary but uh, the Black Virgin Mary and then we have examples also in Italy and uh, Catalonia of uh, statues of, statues of the, the Virgin put on the sea. This is an old tradition and so this song preserves uh, something very old as actually always happens in traditional songs even if uh, even when we are not aware of their deepness and we misunderstand their simplicity with a kind of funny or folkloristic thing those songs are always deeply rooted uh, in something very very old and ancient and uh, the refrain of the song is ondinas uh, venien ondinas ban which is a quote, exact quote from one of the medieval Galician troubadours, Galician Portuguese troubadours, Martin Kodash, who, who wrote, uh, composed a lot of songs in 13th century, particularly this uh, Ondas do Mar de Vigo, which is one of the oldest uh, composition we have uh, in Europe uh, in a Romance language, and one of the oldest examples of uh, popular and uh, traditional poetry applied to the new manuscript tradition. So this song, in a way, is quoting the old tradition of carnival, which goes back to the prehistory of our traditions, in, and also takes some verses, some lines from one of the oldest troubadours, just to make you understand how these song, small songs, uh, traveling songs, are rooted in our in our deep traditions. This is Arian Cheira. This is so famous in in Galicia that uh, eventually and very strangely, this is the the traditional song of uh, the football team of uh, Celta Vigo, but also of La Coruña. They hate each other, but when the, they meet together, they sing all together the same song. So, couldn't happen in Italy. Uh, very strange. Anyway, apart from my interpretation of the song, I'd, I'd like to make you listen to this beautiful old language. Uh, the Galician language is not Spanish. <coughs> and uh, this beautiful uh, melody. Virce de Guadalupe cando vai por la ribeira. La Virce de Guadalupe cando vai por la ribeira. Descalzi na pularea, parece na rian cheira. Descalzi na pularea, parece na rian cheira. Ombinas venha, non dinas venha, non dinas venha ne va. Non te embarques rian cheira, que te vas a marear. Non dinas venha, non dinas venha, non dinas venha ne va. Non te embarques rian cheira, que te vas a marear. La Virce de Guadalupe cando vai por l'Orian Shu. La Virce de Guadalupe cando vai por l'Orian Shu. La barquinha che aveva è de madeira de Rian Shu. La 
barquinha que abeba é de madeira de riancho. Ondinhas venhem, ondinhas venhem, ondinhas venhem e vão. Não te embarques riancheira que te vas a marear. Completing this uh, little tour around the traditions of uh, musical traditions of Europe and not only Europe, as my last CD was uh, released uh, just last week uh, in the Faroe Islands, a place that I frequented a lot in the last 10 years, um, I'd like to make you listen to a song from that place. The Faroe Islands are those islands between the Shetland and Iceland, the volcanic archipelago beautiful place with all traditions that mix together the uh, Germanic Nordic tradition with the Gaelic one but the first settlers of uh, Ferrer were the Irish monks and uh, so there is this strong tradition particularly in the northern islands of the Ferrer of uh, also a few words from Gaelic that disappeared uh, in Ireland and in Scotland but apart from this linguistic problem those are beautiful, beautiful places where to live and uh, nice people living there. I have good friends there and uh, I wanted to make you listen to this uh, sort of fairy tale. It's about two children that uh, goes on the cliff and disappear. So it looks like being a tragedy, but actually after three days they come back very happily and uh, singing this and say that, and they say to their grandfather that they were uh, just singing this melody. La 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 la, la 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 la. So this song, this melody, this song is about a melody. It's about the melody, which is sung, and about the power, I think, of uh, song for healing, for uh, blessing, uh, and for maybe saving lives. It's a, a fairy tale, an old fairy tale. I slumber the girl, slumber ten to my height, the stolper pedo. Hoy, your mind, the low height and top, first lunch and the score. Hoy, my hoin on the hill and do. Laila, the Laila, the low. Laila, the Laila, the low. And my star in the other go. Laila, the Laila, the low. And my kids and do. La 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 la
la la la la lo, la 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 bi, wesh tan bi kan bi. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I have this idea and I started this uh, possibility that all our traditional poetry and traditional songs comes from uh, the ancient art of shamans, the prehistoric shamans, the professionists of words. Actually, they were mostly shamanists, so women shaman. Uh, this is a, a tradition that we many times uh, misunderstand with uh, something that doesn't belong to the real tradition of shamans. Shamans were just the connection between the, the external world and uh, ourselves, and uh, not the supernatural world, not the other world, because uh, in ancient times, in pre-modern times, this distinction be between other world and this world didn't exist at all. So shamans are immanent uh, kind of uh, poets that sing, dance, preserve the traditions and uh, heal. But they, they are not healing because they are wizards. They are healing because our words have the power of healing and our song and our voices. So as I, I think that uh, all our tradition, I made also a few books, I wrote a few books about that, also connecting the troubadours uh, tradition, the uh, Occitan troubadours medieval tradition, structurally compared to the structure of the shaman songs that we can collect thanks to the ethnographists and uh, also frequenting shamans, living shamans from uh, territory ethnographically uh, pregnant, important. I'd like to make you listen to songs from the shaman tradition in order to conclude this uh, small uh, voyage. The first comes from the Mansi tradition of Tuva. Tuva is this region uh, in uh, Siberia, South Siberia, confining with Mongolia and other territories, and it's a uh, a uh, small territory with uh, a lot of languages spoken there. This uh, song uh, is, is about uh, a bear girl. The bear was a totemic animal, also in our traditions, before our civilization destroyed those kind of connections. But still it is, uh, uh, it is uh, strictly connected with, uh, with the great uh, tradition, but that we can also think about uh, Arthurian legends and the name Arthur, which means uh, bird and uh, these kind of things. But uh, this bird girl is a shaman dancing uh, in the village. This song is sung in, uh, in the Mansi language, which is uh, um, one of those languages spoken in Tuva, uh, but it's of uh, Finno-Ugric origin. So it's connected to Hungarian and to Estonian to those languages. This is a song uh, I've learned uh, uh, from uh, recordings by Vera Kondrateva, who is a singer coming from Tuva, who made a lot of research also among the shamans for uh, bringing us those traditions. This is just for making you listen also a kind of rhythm. And later on I conclude uh, with another shaman song. Appa pakuri ka shim shim no na sokalan soteri kupien na. Appa pakuri ka shim shim no na sokalan soteri kupien na. Hindi na iyag hindi nicha hindi na ikara nicha hindi na iya para tusya maya hindi na ikara nicha. Appa pakuri ka shim shim no na sokolan soteri kupien na hindi na niyag hindi nika hindi na ikara nicha. Hindi na iya para tusi ang maya, hindi na ikara yung nicha. A 
papa curi che shim shim e nona Soccolan soteri cupi e nina E nina iate e nini ciara E nina i cara e nicia E nina ia para tosi a maia E nina ia para curi a maia E nina i cara e nini ciara E nina i cara e nicia Thank you. I'd like to leave you with uh, another song from the shamanistic tradition, but in this case it comes from the Inuit tradition of northern Canada. It's a song that was written down the first time by a great anthropologist who studied those traditions. His name was Jean Mallory, and he wrote this beautiful, great book in the 50s, 60s almost, named, titled uh, Le Dernier Roi de Tulle, The Last Kings of Tulle. And uh, apart from studying the way of living of those people, he also written down, wrote down uh, songs, shamanic song or traditional songs. This song is very, uh, I, I decided to to close the concert with this song because it's a, a song, uh, it's a well-wishing song. So it's just, it's exactly for you, uh, with a, an auspicious song for something good, for something uh, happy. And uh, it's a song that was traditionally sung uh, at the end of the six months of Arctic darkness, when the sun was coming back and uh, all the animals were still uh, running around. So this song simply names uh, animals and the sun many times, uh, Nuanda, and animals. So it's a kind of um, song uh, who teaches us uh, to be uh, aware and to be able to perceive the wonder of existence because uh, we see the sun every day so we are we have a sort of habits to it. <laughs> but uh, this song is exactly something that belongs to what poetry and traditional art is. It teaches us to, to perceive the normal things as extraordinary. And this is why I, I quite like it. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and patience. I'd like to thank uh, Tim for his excellent work. I, I've never been amplified like that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for your excellent, I, I was feeling very comfortable and it's a very good thing for a, for a musician to put in this condition of uh, uh, playing uh, without problems of sounds. And thank you again to Ian Gad for this kind invitation and uh, to this beautiful uh, institution. I quite like this room, this hall. And uh, really, really nice. Thank you very much again for your.
inspiring uh, and wide-ranging tour around the different uh, uh, musical traditions across not just Europe but beyond. Um, I think given the time and I want to make sure that there's a little bit of time for people to have a chat with Francesco afterwards, he's also got some CDs uh, <laughs> and books here to sell, so we will call it an evening tonight. But thank you again for coming, and uh, I, uh, I, I hope I speak for all of you that uh, we will be leaving here with a little extra spring in our step, uh, thanks to Francesco. So again, thank you so much. Thank you.